Greetings, everyone. I hope you are well and in the best of health, wherever you are. I'm Shazrail, and today we are going to look at how to write an informal email. We will learn about the structure of the informal email, how to plan our writing and construct the email using appropriate language, form, and style. Before we begin, how about if we dwell into some of the examples of how people stay connected and communicate these days? Technology has played a truly significant role in the evolution of how people interact with each other. I'm not going to go as far back to the times when people used to send smoke signals or telegraph, although if you consider it closely, those are, in fact, some of the earliest technology of communication. But let's look at the means of communication people are using nowadays. From traditional mail to digital video phone calls, every aspect of how people interact these days has something to do with technology. Today, we have text messaging through free multi-platform messaging apps that lets you make video and voice calls, send text messages, and more. Nevertheless, we still use services and communication means, such as emails, as well as letters and postcards. Apart from that, it is also common for people to go on social media sites to stay connected and updated with each other. My point is, there are so many ways of interaction for us to choose from. So, which one are you familiar with? Okay, back to our focus for today. In this lesson, we are going to focus on writing an informal email. Informal emails are different from formal emails. Well, at least in terms of the people we send them to. We normally write informal emails when we want to be friendly, or when we know the reader really, really well. Also, if the intention of us writing the email is not official, and basically just to us, or com convey simple messages. Let me give you some of the examples of why people send informal emails. Informing about celebrations and special occasions, making invitations, asking for explanations, asking for the latest updates of their family or friend's well-being, sending a birthday greeting to a friend, or simply just writing a social message to a friend to keep in touch. So, how does an informal email look like? Firstly, let's look at the general structure of an email. Basically, in a normal email template, you'll find spaces to fill in email address for the person or persons receiving the email. You know, that box on top next to the place that has the word to on your email window. In most of email service websites, programs or applications, the email address of the person who is sending the email or the sender is already filled in. That's why you need to log in with your username and passwords. Then, you fill in the subject line with the exact topic you are addressing to the recipient. For instance, birthday invitation, science homework, mom's secret dinner, etc., etc., etc. Normally, this box is labeled as subject. When you are ready, it's time for you to begin writing the content of your email. Do you see that big empty space at the or bottom of the screen. Sometimes there is a bar, some tools which you can use to interchangeably format the text of your email content to make it look more interesting. Just like a letter, you begin an email with a salutation and greetings. But different than a formal email, which you normally start with, dear sir or madam, or the name of the recipient with a title like, Mr. or Professor or Doctor. For an informal email, you can just begin with a more casual salutations or greetings, such as, Hi! Hello! Hi there! Hey there! Good day! 
Greetings from the city that never sleeps. Note that you can use an exclamation point here to show that you are excited to write to your recipient, which is something we would definitely not do in a formal email or letter. In an informal email, you can also use your recipient's first name without a title. You could follow that with a friendly expression like, How are you? How are you doing? I hope you're well. Choose the appropriate one for your informal conversation. Of course, the ones that I have mentioned might be just three. Three examples, but you can always be creative in using whichever casual salutations or greetings that is appropriate. Or if you are responding to an email that was sent to you previously, you could say, Thanks for your email. It was really great to hear from you. I enjoyed reading your email. Then, you start writing the main points of the email, which is the reason you are sending it in the first place. You may begin with, I'm writing this email to remind you about mom's secret dinner, and proceed with other related points to the topic. Remember, because it's informal, you can use more contractions like it's for it is, isn't for it's not, it'll for it will, won't for will not, can't for cannot. Finally, you still need to end the email with a proper closing. Sometimes you can finish up your email by making a suggestion or recommendation to your friend. For example, you might want to bring something to eat, or if you like, we can visit the newly opened shopping mall while you're here. Then, you can finish off your email. There are lots of options here. Here are some more. Please make sure you have the cakes ready. Give my, uh, give my love or regards to your family. Say congratulations to your children for me. Thanks again for your help. I hope to hear from you soon. See you soon. Right soon. Keep in touch. Then you can go on and sign off. This part is not crucial, but most people like to do this. Right before you state your name, just include this word or phrase. Love, lots of love. Best wishes, yours, all the best. So, there they are, some suggestions for you. But what you write in an informal letter is really up to you. Let's see. Here is an example of an email. Let's read it and find out who it is from and what it is about. Firstly, I can see the recipient's email as indicated in the two space as 3 at hotmail.com. Secondly, I can see the sender's email address, kmels at yahoo.com. How do I know this? Exactly, the box label from. Now you try. What is the subject of the email? Where do you look for if you like to identify the subject of the email? Of course, from what was written on the box label, Subject. Here it says, study group invitation. That's quite straightforward, don't you think so? Thus, you can already assume that this is an email to call for a discussion or, of course, a study together. Let's go on and read the content of the email to know what was the sender's intention in detail. Hi, Tricia. How are you? I'm having a study group on Saturday, 12 October at 10 a.m. because our final exam is just around the corner. Would you like to come? Valerie, Joffrey and Durka are coming too. Let me know your answer. Love, Kara. From this email, we know that the recipient is Tricia and Kara is the sender. 
Kara is writing to her friend, Tricia, asking her to join a study group discussion at her house on 12 October, which happens to be a Saturday. Since this email is between friends, Kara obviously uses informal language and friendly tone to get her message across. Simple, short, and direct. Do you know who else other than friends that we can send informal emails to? Yes, you are right. We can also send informal emails to communicate with our family members. Similar to any writing task, you must always plan what you are going to write. You must know who your audience are because this sets the tone and language that you are going to use in the email. I mean, it is true that you send informal emails both to your friends and your mom, but you are more careful with, your, with the language used with your mom than your close friend, right? Then, check the purpose of your writing. And before you begin, it would be a good idea if you learn some useful phrases or expressions that can help to make your writing sound more mm, natural. Just like how I have said before this, you can start your email using friendly greetings or questions like, Hi, Hello, or, How are you? Or, How are things? How is it going? Or, It's good to hear from you. Here's how you can end the email in a friendly way too, using these expressions. Bye. Bye for now. See you soon. Speak to you later. That's all for now. Write soon or write back soon and tell me all about it. Apart from that, here are some useful expressions you can use in your emails. These expressions usually set apart between formal and informal emails. Therefore, and I will repeatedly emphasize, you should only use this in informal emails. Here are the expressions. I really miss you. Sorry, I haven't been in touch for such a long time. I love reading your emails. Good luck. Sorry for not answering your last email. And I've been meaning to write you for ages now. The next email is from Charlotte, replying to her friend. Alice. Charlotte is helping Alice to write about a project that they did some time ago. Let's read it together. Hi Alice, how are things? It's great to hear from you. I really miss you. That's an interesting project your teacher has given you. Why don't you write about the special day we had at school a month ago? Everyone made all gift things to sell. There were cupcakes, bread, pizza, books, pictures, and clothes. Our families came and we had a party. It was fantastic. We made 1,600 pounds. We gave all the money to help protect honeybees. A lot of the natural habitat for bees has gone because people have built houses and roads on it. We need to save the bees. Good luck with your project. Please write back and tell me about it. Bye, Charlotte. There were some expressions used in here that you could also use in your writing. Do you know which ones? Let's go through them together. Try and locate them in the email which appears on your screen. Look carefully. They are, Hi, Alice. How are things? It's great to hear from you. I really miss you.
good luck with your project. Please write back and tell me about it. Bye. Also, in the email, you can see that Charlotte has used a friendly opening asking about the reader. She also used a friendly ending with informal expressions. Information about the things people do to help protect the planet and the information about the environment. The next image that you see is part of an email received from a friend in England. She needs help with a certain information for her to complete a project-based activity. Our teacher has asked the class to write about the things people do to help protect the planet around the world. I want to write about what people do in your country. Can you send me some information? Based on this email, what type of text do you have to write? Yes, you are right. You are supposed to write an email to a friend. What will it be about? You will share what people do in your country to help protect the planet. What does your friend need to know? She needs information about what people in your country do to protect the planet. So, will it be formal or an informal email? Yes, it will be an informal email. I think we have already covered that it is important to make a plan before beginning to write. So, let's check out some tips in planning your writing task properly. Firstly, you need to read the task carefully and underline or highlight the key points. Then, think about the information you need to include in the email so that every task is uttered. Next, decide what information you are going to write in each paragraph and make some notes for your reference and to keep you in check of the ideas in your writing. Last but not least, check that you have included all the points in logical order so that it is easy to be read and understood by the reader. Now we are ready to tackle the next task. Let's read the next email. We are all making posters at school about renewable energy around the world. I want to make mine about renewable energy in your country. Can you send me some information about it? So, the instruction is, now write an email to your friend giving some information about renewable energy in your country. Use approximately 100 words. So in this task, what should you do? You're going to write a, a reply to your friend using an informal email and provide some information about renewable energy in your country. Don't forget that you have to write within the 100 word limit as mentioned in the task. Why don't you try to write a simple reply to this email? You can include some of the useful expressions that we have learned today. So, do you remember them? Here are the lists again. Let's go through one by one.
am sure you have all the needed points written in your reply. Let's take a look at an example reply from Carl in Canada. Read what he has got to share. Hi, Laura. How are you? That project sounds fun. Canada has many examples of renewable energy. One of the biggest sources come from wind power. We have about 3,000 wind turbines across the country. Another source which is not as popular is solar energy. This is where the sun heats solar panels placed on buildings. As a result, they light or heat that area. The problem with this energy source is that it's sometimes cloudy here, which is why it's not as popular. Good luck with the poster. Send me a picture when you are finished. Bye, Carl. Carl has used appropriate greeting and ending, as well as useful expressions in his reply. We shall highlight them. He used the greeting, Hi, Laura. How are you? And then he proceeded to end the email by, Bye, Carl. He used useful expressions, That project sounds fun. Good luck with your poster. Send me a picture when you are finished. Hmm. Let's see if Carl has provided all the information needed by Laura in his email. Write about things people do to help protect the planet. In his email, Carl mentioned about the 3,000 wind turbines across the country and the use of solar energy where the sun hits solar panels placed on buildings in Canada. That's wonderful! Thank you, Carl. I'm sure you too have managed to write a reply with all the information needed. Well done! Go ahead, give yourself a treat or pat on the back. Here's a recap on what we have learned today in order to write an informal email. Do keep in mind that informal emails are for family and friends. Even so, language use must be, must always be polite. You should use friendly greetings and endings as well as expressions to help make your writing sound more natural. Also, plan your work properly by doing, just do all this. Underline the key points in the task so that no important information is left, is left out un unnecessarily. Think carefully about the information to be included in the email. Then, read the task again just to be sure. Make notes on the information for each paragraph. And don't forget, use the appropriate vocabulary and language to get your message across. Oh, before I forget, also check that all points are in logical order. Let's do this simple quiz just to check your understanding. Which of these are used for greetings in informal emails? Look at the list and select appropriate endings for informal emails. of expressions for emails. Which ones belong in an informal one? Read the example email again and choose from the list the information Kara has included in it. Yes, we have a greeting. Yes, 
Kara included the reason for the group discussion and also the time the discussion starts as well as the date of the discussion. She also mentioned the details of others who are coming. But no, she did not tell the reader to keep it as a secret. Nor did she say that the reader could bring another friend. Kara definitely asked the reader to, de to reply to the invitation and use informal expressions for the informal email. Now here's an email from Aini. Let's read what she has got to say. Hi, how are you doing? I know I haven't written for a long time. I'm terribly sorry for that. I'm writing in to let you know that I'm back in town for good. So I'd love to meet and catch up with you and Mirza. I'm in the midst of unpacking my things so, um, shall we meet next Saturday at Moonbeam Cafe? How are you enjoying your part-time job? Please reply soon. Love, Aini. So, Aini is asking for a meetup to exchange all news with you on next Saturday. So, are you going or not? Will you, will you accept the invitation? What will your reply be? Why don't you try writing a reply now? You can refer to the chart as reference before you start writing. As it is, you need a greeting, you need an opening line, points in writing, an appropriate closing sentence, and of course, an ending. I believe your reply for this task is showing better progress than the previous ones. I have a sample reply from Milia. Let's see what she has got to say in the email. Hi, Aini. I've been meaning to write to you for ages too, but I've been so busy with my new job. I'm so glad to know you're back in town for good. Fortunately, I'm off next Saturday so I'll meet you up at Moonbeam Cafe at 11 a.m. I'll go with Hafiz. My new job is fun. I will tell you more when we meet up. See you soon, Milia. I hope today's lesson has helped you to gain better insight in order to write more effective emails in the future, especially informal emails. Always remember, you can do this. Keep on writing and Goodbye.